Thanks for the revive. No. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that if you get hit by your teammate, he revives you. Holy shit, I wasn't expecting this game to be like this. After playing it, I'm glad to say that this game is one of them hidden gems and if you're a Saturn fan, this is one what you definitely want. Free Day The Wolves is a unique 2D action side scroller with its own weird art style and personality what was released for the Saturn and for the time that this game came out, it's pretty damn good. The story is about these kids playing a board game, what sort of like Dungeons and Dragons, maybe and they bring these three dirty wolves into the real world. When they get in trouble with the government, but as they brought them through into the real world, they also brought the enemies of the game as well. I would say something here, but that's just a mind fuck on its own. Wait, what? So they're bringing all this weird shit just to save themselves and destroy everyone else? Well, oh, it sounds to me that no kids are a victim to the game here. The graphics it's like a cartoony feel to it, what goes well with the game and makes up the atmosphere of it, what draws you in even further. The gameplay is solid and you get used to the controls very quickly, you play as the three dirty dwarfs and you can switch between them at any time, or you can just have up to three players. Unfortunately I didn't get a chance with the multiplayer but I can see their game being that much more better if you got someone to play co-op with. And each one of the Dwarves have their own unique attack style, like one's a bowler, he's going to attack in a bowling style, and the other one's a baseball player, so he can throw balls up and whack them. <laughs> Good thing to say, and where the bloody hell are we? Well, where the fuck did this come from? Then you got the one with the shotgun. For me, the one that I kept on using the most was the bowler. He seemed to move a bit more quicker than the others. As you're playing, if you get here, it automatically switches to the other dwarf until they all get knocked down. You can revive the other dwarfs by hitting them as they get knocked down. But this game isn't for the faint hearted. This can be difficult, especially on the hardest setting. There's these skulls and dice what you collect throughout the levels for a power attack. It changes depending on which dwarf you're using. You get three skulls for a dice, or if you get enough skulls, you can combine the three dirty dwarfs into a... Well, it's pretty nice. But if you get hit once, you're gonna lose a skull. There is a unique variety of enemies, and some of them are crazy and out of this well. I remember at one point, I had to pause the game when a streaker came out of nowhere with its martial art moves. <laughs> There is gonna be at least one enemy what will stun you and later on you have to apply new ways of attacking them because they come out with new tactics or different style of attacking. The bosses, ah, oh, the bosses are fun and inventive. You get to fight buildings, dragons and jump on beds and other weird shit, especially the one at the end. Now we get to the load screens. It's good at first, it's like kicking ass, and then after about three to four times it starts getting annoying where you keep hearing this over and over and over again. And the fucking baseball stage is annoying, the controls don't respond the way it should and it's awkward to aim for the right enemy, this stage holds the game back a bit of how frustrating it is. Yeah, it can be easy, but only if you practice intensely. The level design is astronomical, a lot of it is unusual with its own atmosphere, what makes it that much more engaging to the game, it matches up with the new enemies what pop up on each level, you can tell there's a lot of care what went into this. For the soundtrack, I've got to admit that the title screen soundtrack is the most catchy, and the rest of the level have good soundtracks as well, even though the enemy sound can be annoying. This game has some nice cutscenes, some of them of an old school cartoony, it kind of reminds me of the Yak Refresh cartoon, what I think was made back in the 70s, it's kind of like that with that theme. Just without that singing part, and for a game to have good cutscenes in them what are more detailed than its time, I've got to give applause here for the developers. They kept me watching instead of skipping over it. As for characters, there's really nothing to them, but you can tell they're trying to do the most what the Saturn will let them to do. And where it's from the 32-bit era, I can't believe they pulled it off. 
For the voice acting, it's alright, it's nothing special, but sometimes it's hard to make out what the dwarves are saying. Most of the time it's like mumbling, but I think it's supposed to be like that. For how long the game is, it's around about an hour and a half, unless you're playing on the hardest setting. In that case, it's more like two hours, because it adds some new levels into it. So in the end, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's a must own if you're a Saturn fan. The only thing that held it back from getting a 10 out of 10 is that annoying baseball level when sometimes it's hard to know exactly where you're standing on the screen. So have you played it? Leave it in the comments below. Until next game, I'm fucking off. Did anyone else notice that you were slowly moving to the right the old time of this bit? Or was that just me? Oh, you've got that. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're saying you got that from that? Whoa, whoa, whoa.